shortly show why relational databases just won't do the job. Um, I will show you an obvious graph database solution, which every one of you probably would have picked by himself, and uh, I will show what the problem with this solution is, if you want to have a real-time answer system. Um, and then I will uh, introduce the idea of our method that we call gravity. And then I give two examples, but they are more or less like theoretical <coughs> the runtime of all the operations that we do. And uh, then, well, we actually evaluate this on our social network, but it's just not as big as Wikipedia, so then we did an evaluation on Wikipedia data set. Um, okay, so you have a typical social network that consists of some users, and uh, the users are modeled with uh, letters, and they produce content items, which are produced as numbers, and you can think of the content items as timestamps. So in this network, this would be the most recent content item. And what you have then is you pick some user A, and you look at all his friends, and all the content items you produce, and what you get is um, a news stream. So basically you get like your timeline that says, well, D produced something, and B says something, and there's a status update of C, we've all seen this. And um, there are some, quite some challenges to this problem. So if you're on Twitter or Facebook, you have several thousands requests per second. Um, the next thing is, people actually write a lot of stuff on this. I mean, in 2010, Twitter reported to have 600 tweets per second, so you need to update your databases all the time. Um, and then the news feeds are different for every user, so caching is kind of hard to implement. Um, and things should be, as I said, in real time. I mean, in a web application, you want to have the answer now. I mean, this morning we saw quite some talks about, well, we can store a graph, we can distribute, we can process it in days and get some answers. That's nice, but in a system like this, you want to answer now. And what also is happening is that the friendship graph changes over time. So if you're a new user, you add new friendships, or some friendships break, and uh, well, your new stream should adapt to this. So this makes this uh, approach of, well, I store everything in a file for me, kind of hard to handle, because then you get uh, updating problems. So what you can say overall, this is a very dynamic problem, and has a lot of chaotic and unpredictable, unpredictable behavior. And um, I'll show you why relational databases won't do the job. So that's your social network. You have users and you have one table for the users. <coughs> so what you do next is um, you add all the edges. You get another table uh, of the followers. And this table is going to be huge. Um, afterwards, you add all the content items in this star topology. So you link everything. You get the next table. And then you get this query. And if you look at this query, it contains two joins, and the joins are over quite big tables. I mean, <laughs> one is the follower table, which is a very sparse matrix, and the content items is just huge. Um, even on Metalcon that has 10,000 users, I try to do this on MySQL, and the query is about like two or two seconds or something. And I did this in Neo4j and was uh, four times faster. So graph databases really do the job here. So, um, how could you model this? Well, as I already showed, you could do something like that. But the problem here is, um, what you do is you do breadth first search. So you collect all the content items, and then you sort the content items by time. And sorting is uh, done in n log n time. So, it's quite a lot if you just want to retrieve, let's say, 10 news feeds items, or maybe 20. I mean, think of your social network, you have 300 friends. They produce maybe two content items a day. Um, so we thought, well, maybe we don't have to look at all the content items, but just as the most recent content items. So we changed the, the content items and making a linked list out of them. But making a linked list out of them is quite nice. 
it's still very dynamic and retrieval because you can fix a node and you go just to the friends, look at the most recent content item, you sort everything. Mm -hmm. It's a very flexible data structure because if a friendship breaks up, you just take it away and <coughs> you retrieve another feed. Uh, and the inserts are very fast. I mean, you just have to update one linked list at the very first element. Um, there's one problem to it. And the problem is still the entire ego network needs to be sorted. So if I'm for A and I want to do my graph retrieval, I don't know where to start. I mean, the best idea would be to start going to the direction of D and then go to the direction of B. But when I'm here, I don't have this knowledge. And the graph database that I were aware of couldn't solve this problem out of the box. So I was thinking of, well, maybe I'm modeling the graph in the wrong way. So let's talk about gravity. So we're taking back this graph. And what I realized is by looking at this graph is actually, well, why do I have to model the friendships in the star topology? I could just add another index. So you still have the star topology, but I'm saying, well, I just make the edges like this. And this edge tells me actually that B is a friend of A, because I label the edges with uh, the ID of the first node. So in this way, um, I can make a really fast retrieval. Because what I have to do now, I just have to follow this path. And while following this path, collecting all these content items. Um, so that's basically the idea of gravity. And there are some, quite some problems when you try to do this. I mean, one example is uh, in a graph of two million users, you want to have two million different relationship types. And uh, guys from Neo4j were very helpful in providing me a fork of Neo4j that was actually ha able to handle this. Because right out of the box, I think you had 32,000, something like this. Maybe, I don't know. Um, yeah? Just because of what? Yeah. Since you're working in Neo4j, why not just that? have a property on the relationship? Um, well, if I have the property on the relationship, I have to retrieve relationships. And then, well, in my, in, my, in my traversa, I just want to say, follow all relationships of this type. I don't want to retrieve all the relationships that are at this node, and then choose the one with the right property, because then I have the node degree again every time I do the next hop. So I want to have a certain relationship type that just goes for me. That was the reason. Um, because otherwise I just could have stayed with the old approach. So this is what the, the social network would look like for two users. It looks kind of messed up, but the good news is it works. So, um, and weird things can happen actually. For example, if you look at this edge, uh, there's one ego network going in this direction saying that this node is in the ego network of A before this node, and for B the ego network goes just in the opposite direction. So. Um, this also makes it very hard to implement like caching strategies because like weird things can happen. Um, so the first thing is about talking about retrieval. So how would you actually retrieve something if you have this gravity index? <coughs> so we're starting at this graph and I'm just rearranging this a little bit to like display it in a nicer way. I hope everyone can see what's happening. So these are the two rearranging steps. So now I have a list like this and I want to do the retrieval. Well, to get the first item, the 19, that's easy. But after I have the 19, I don't know if I have to follow the linked list that is horizontal, or I have to follow the linked list that is vertical. So um, what I did is I, uh, I didn't invent, but uh, I used a priority queue. And on the priority queue, I stored the top element of every list that I processed so far. So in this way, I always know with which list I have to process. So when I start the... Um, the retrieval method. I go to the first uh, content item and I save a pointer there that says me I'm at the rightmost list. And I push the 19 to the priority. <coughs> and then I do retrieval. And so I know, well, the first item is the 19. And since the pointer was at the 19, I know, well, I push this item on the priority queue and I push this item on the priority queue. So now I have two lists that my index is managing. Basically, the 14 and the 3 shows that the lists D and B are managed. So if I look at this list for the next retrieval, I would have to retrieve 14. So the priority queue tells me I have to go horizontal. So I do this again. And since I moved the list, I also move the pointer again. So I push the 12 on the list, I retrieve the 14, and I push the 11 on the list. And now comes the interesting part because now when I do this, well, eventually I might run out of space here because I have already all the friends in there, but usually that doesn't happen because I only retrieve 15 items and friends are more. Um, but now, the priority queue is telling me, well, I have to proceed with this list. 
And people kept asking me, like, do you proceed with this, or with this, or with the next one? And the product coach is telling me, well, take the 11. So this is what I know. So this basically um, shows how the retrieval algorithm works in this data structure. And you can easily prove that it's uh, k log k in the amount of uh, items you want to retrieve. Because every time when you insert something to Kronos, you will take log k steps. And the most list that you get is actually k lists. Because after k friends, I mean, you have k elements at most. Um, which is pretty fast. I mean, k log k is much faster than if you're looking at your entire node uh, ego network and uh, sort everything. So um, I already hear people like saying, well, maybe you have some problems here. And you actually do. Because uh, when you do updates, um, you have to update the index. And that could be kind of expensive. So for example, um, if I do an update, all the people who are following me have to, have to change their gravity index that I just invented. And um, so when I do an update, it's, the runtime is my entire ego network. So if I'm Lady Gaga, which, I'm, which fortunately I'm not, but uh, then a lot of <laughs> indices have to be uh, updated. Um, and as you can see later in the evaluation, this really takes some time, but we decided and we have the experience that actually updating doesn't happen that frequently. Because, I mean, retrieving and reading is, is the option that happens more, more often. Um, the same happens when a new friendship is created or friendship breaks, but also those operations don't happen that often. And uh, even worse, the most recent content item is deleted, but that's a very rare case. I mean, that hardly happens in a social network. We look at the Metalcon data and only every 10,000 delete is the most recent content item. So that doesn't really matter that it take, actually takes some time. Um, <coughs> what I want to talk about now is the first one. When I do a new post on the network, what happens? How do I update the index? So let's assume I'm user A and B makes a new update. Looks something like this. So the first step is very easy. You just rearrange the linked list of B. But now if you look at the linked list, um, it's not at the right position of my, of my ego network, of my gravity index anymore. But what I can do is, I can always say, well, its predecessor and its successor, I can just interlink them. And that's a nice thing for Neo4j as a graph database. Even though I just said follow edges in one direction, I could just go backwards. So actually, they implement this kind of as a doubly linked list. So I can do the step of just interlinking those. One step, one calculation, or one. And, um, well, then this one points to the wrong one, and this one points to the wrong one. Well, it's not pointed yet. But that's quite easy again, because, um, I mean, it's the same as inserting an item in the linked list at the beginning. So I will just change those two arrows, which is also all one. So updating one single gravity index is constant runtime. And I have to do this for all the D people following me. Um, yeah. So. Um, I thought that was quite of nice, and we programmed this, and it was a demo, and you can see it on the web. But then people were like, yeah, but does this really scale? This is really huge. And well, as I said, Metalcon is just like a small social network, and it's actually not a running system right now. I mean, we're redesigning it, but we haven't put that live. So we said, well, let's test this. So what we did is um, we went to the Wikipedia data set. So you can download Wikipedia. And for anyone who wants to process graphs, Wikipedia is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and especially it contains a social network. So what we did is the following. We said, well, every article in Wikipedia is one user. And every link from one article to another article is a follow edge. And every time you have a new revision, this is a status update, because you get the timestamp. And actually, within the new revision, uh, links could change. So, well, here your social network changes, so the structure changes. So, um, we downloaded 100 gigabytes of Wikipedia revision dump and uh, extracted the social network data out of this. And, um, well, this is just what the social networks look like. So, you have a low degree distribution that follows a power law. And uh, the reason why I show this in our evaluation, like this first part, all those nodes that have a really small node degree kind of screwed the evaluation first. But uh, we figured this out and then we made a better evaluation. So this is what we tried first. We tried to retrieve for every year of Wikipedia, 2004, 2005, 2006, just as many news streams as we could. We just picked a random article, said, get me the news stream and see how many news streams I could do. So uh, 
we see that gravity was faster than our baseline method, which was the one where you just had like the linked lists that I explained in the beginning. And we could retrieve something like 20,000 new streams per second. But uh, what looked kind of obscure to us is that gravity went down with the runtime because we just thought retrieving is uh, only depending on the load degree. And the network size, if it grows, the retrieval should be almost the same. Um, and as I said, this happens due to the fact that uh, there are so many nodes that have a low load degree. And that's growing in Wikipedia. And um, we, we did the second experiment then, and saying, well, let's just retrieve the stream for nodes that have a degree bigger than 10. And um, well, by doing so, gravity stayed constant, but the other algorithm also stayed constant. And we're like, well, maybe that belongs to the degree distribution and something. So the next thing we did is actually we bent the articles together. And then actually things happened as we expected them to happen. So what we did is we put all the articles of node degree 10 to 20 together, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, and retrieved streams for them. And here we did this on the 2009 uh, Wikipedia data set. And we see that gravity, no matter what the node degree is for retrieval, is able to always retrieve about 12,000 uh, streams per second. And if we use the other method, we can see that it really goes down when the node degree grows. So for a small node degree, and remember in Wikipedia, many, many nodes have the small node degree. That's why it was also pretty fast on the like, entire network. Uh, you have still a pretty fast retrieval, but then it drops down. And what we did is we plotted the curve of uh, d log d, so you can actually see that it's really the sorting of the ego network that takes the time. And um, when we went down there, we said, well, all those experiments before we did with a k of 15, because we find it kind of reasonable to retrieve 15 <coughs> use items for a user. But we said, well, what's happening if you change the k? Because, I mean, our theoretical findings said that the algorithm should actually be k log k dependent. Uh, so, again, for the 2009 Wikipedia data set, we changed the k in retrieval. And uh, you can see what's happening. So for very small k, gravity is freaking fast. I mean, that's obvious because you also almost do no graph traversal. But if the k goes further, of course, the speed of gravity is also. Um, and the other, it stays almost constant with k, but because in the beginning the sorting of the ego network is the dominant factor, but then also it drops down. Um, the interesting thing is actually the two curves that we put in. Because we figured out that gravity behaves much more like this curve than this curve. And this one is the curve of 1 over k. So that shows that in most cases the data lies in the way that retrieval actually is even faster than k log k. Um, which for Wikipedia kind of makes sense because if an article gets changed once, or well, sometimes there gets an edit more and articles change back and forth. So there's a lot of updates on one thread, but not on the others necessarily. So, well, maybe Wikipedia is just not the best example to test this, but this is what we found out. Um, okay, so then there is the downside of gravity. We checked how many um, indexes could we update, how many how many tweets per second can actually be entered. So as I said, in our first method, you can basically just have to add one edge to the graph. So it's very fast. You can do it in, on a machine. Almost 1,000 uh, inserts in the graph is getting bigger. And our method, of course, since we need to rearrange all the ego networks and all the gravity indices, is going down. But still, if you look here, we could maintain something like uh, 100 uh, inserts per second. Um, which is still not enough, obviously, because, I mean, Twitter, as I just said, has 600. Um, but I have to say, all these tests were run on a single machine. I mean, it had a lot of RAM, but it, they were run on a single machine, and it was not distributed yet. Um, same is happening for adding new friendship relations. We expected gravity to be not as fast as the other method, but with 10,000 friendship requests that can be uh, maintained per second, we thought that's kind of fine. And also the same is uh, when friendships break. Um, could do 10,000 per second. Um, yeah, that's the last slide for, uh, for our evaluation. We wanted ourselves how long do we actually take to put the entire graph into our database and to calculate the gravity index. So what you here see is uh, first the time that it takes to insert all the data of the uh, Wikipedia data sets in the, in the standard graph structure, and then the additional time that it takes to calculate the gravity index once uh, for every node. So you can see that actually calculating the gravity index takes about the same amount of time as just entering all the data. And uh, for the Wikipedia data set, it took like 80 minutes to 
put everything into there. And I think that's pretty fine. So yeah, what did we do? We actually created um, a retrieval of social news, news feeds of K items for users in OK log K uh, with a very dynamic retrieval <coughs> method because of the graph changes, the, the results change. Um, the interesting thing about this is we have no redundancy in the data. I should have pointed this out before more clearly, but um, what others are trying to do um, is they're storing all the updates for me in a file for me and all the updates for you in a file for you. But um, we don't do this. All the content items are just once in the graph and all the users are just once in the graph and we just have a different way of interlinking all the edges. Um, and well, if we create new status updates, we have to update the gravity index. That's <coughs> what it is. But each update, or each update, or each of the gravity index is done in constant time. And uh, we have conducted an evaluation on this on a graph with uh, two million users. So this is about the amount of articles that are in Wikipedia. That among themselves had about 32 million uh, follow relationships, and there were 50 million status updates in the entire graph. So within the database, we had since each status update is one node, um, about 50 million nodes in the graph that we processed. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Um, you can find the entire evaluation with some text on my blog. Um, and uh, you can subscribe to the newsletter because the source code is not open yet. That's the only drawback that I have to say because it's submitted to a conference and usually you publish your code once the conference accepts the paper. So I'm planning to uh, give away the entire evaluation framework, which is uh, really big, and um, yeah, so thank you for your attention, and if you have some questions, I'm willing to answer them. Uh, just a quick question about the update, if I understood well, yeah. uh, just correct me if I got it wrong. Um, if you're really concerned about updates, uh, and for example, update and friendships and uh, followers, um, is graphically not really the most suitable solution in terms of performance and scalability. Right. Is that right? Is that right? That is right. That is right. What do you plan to do? Do you plan to yeah, improve this, this part of, um, of the project? Or, um... No, actually, um, what, what we're thinking right now is that retrieval is like the most important mm -hmm. concern. Because retrieval happens so much more frequently than actually the changing of functions. And as you could see in the, in the um, evaluation, we could still maintain to update 10,000 friendships per second. So we were quite satisfied with this. I mean, that's, that's the baseline result for us as a maintainer of a social network. <laughs> saying that's enough. I mean, show me a social network that has more than 10,000 friendship changes per second. I mean, maybe there are some, but I can't think of that. Pretty cool, but I was also thinking that users like me only log into Facebook once a month. So yes. I, for me, retrieval is not really. I mean, I'm not a high priority user to build the fit for myself. So right. if you spend time in building fit for users like me constantly, whenever I, I only need it once a month, yes. you're wasting a lot of resources. Like right. That. Really improve it for so many like Okay, there's some research going on in this direction because um, if you use this priority queue, priority queue like structure you actually don't need the entire gravity index to be ordered. Right. For example, you could say, well, if there are five updates that are not just the most recent updates, but they're in the beginning of the network still, that's fine. Because I just say, well, I make my K a little bit bigger, and I just retrieve a little bit more, and then sort them at the back, and then I cut it off again. So that's actually how we're trying to handle this later on. And saying, well, when the update is fired, I look at your node, and I see, well, you didn't log in for such a long time, I don't update your index. Right. And maybe if you log in, I can update your index and, and make some kind of a hybrid solution. But for the power users, this model is much more suitable. And power users actually produce all the views and produce all the retrieval. But that's, that's our idea of how to solve this. But we didn't do any evaluation on this yet. Okay. Yeah. Um, in your experiments with the Wikipedia data set, did you do like a mixed benchmark where you have like a real workload? Like people like, I mean, you Yes, do, you yes, yes. I mean, that's, that's, that's the interesting. I didn't show the slides. Because in the, like, at least my advisor said in the scientific community, they don't care about that because Wikipedia is not really a social network. So we split up everything, but we did this, and it behaves quite well. I mean, basically, you really get the average of all those things. But I mean, that's the interesting thing about Wikipedia. Once you have the data set, you can just simulate how Wikipedia involves and we did this. Yes. But basically, so what you get is basically these pictures, those three. 
with the updates just in one picture. That you could track actually. What we did actually is um, use the multi threading to uh, see how much time was spent for each of those and basically get the same graphs, but just in one. Yeah. Do you think I'm going to. I think it, it, it was good to take Wikipedia as an example because it, it's great and it's right. available and all that. Do you think it would be different if you try with um, data from a social networking site? Would, it be, would you expect some, uh, yeah, some bad or. Or well, I mean, if you, look at, if, you, if you look at this graph, I would say that the social network graph would look pretty same, right? Um, what this graph doesn't tell you is the frequency of content items that are produced. And it doesn't tell you how the content items come from which users. So I expect the behavior to be a little bit different. For example, um, I expect here that gravity more behaves like the log n, k log k curve. So yes, I, I would expect a different behavior. But as I said, the medical data set was just too fast to, to really get a track of this. And maybe, I mean, there's still five minutes time. I use this time to show you the demo. So on our website, actually, we put a small Wikipedia data set because a web server doesn't have that much memory. So it's the Bavarian Wikipedia. I didn't even know it existed. Before. <laughs> the evaluation of Bavarian is a dialect in German language. And they have about 9,000 articles. And uh, we pre-processed the graph. And if you go to the news feed, and this is online, right? This is my server in Germany. Here's the feed. And uh, I mean, right now it's just a timestamp and an entity of Wikipedia without the content, because I don't want to provide it here. But if I <coughs> click just on the uh, soccer club of it, bam, it's there. It's not no caching inside there. It's just an Ajax application on GWT. And so this is how fast the database is in the back. So you can really use this in a, in a real world scenario. We found this pretty cool when we yeah. put this on. <laughs> I mean, thanks to you guys. I mean, you provide the technology.